From the Roman Colosseum to the White House, columns are an indispensable structural element. The high-rise portion of the new US-331 bridge across the Choctahatchee Bay is being constructed with bridge piers. For this portion of the bridge, a total of 21 piers will support the bridge that spans the intercoastal waterway. The piers are comprised of footings, columns, and caps. The column's primary function is to support the caps and transfer the load from the superstructure, which includes the bridge deck and girders, to the bridge pile foundation. Column construction is a dynamic, multi-phase process that requires planning and attention to detail. First, crews assemble a column cage using reinforcing steel, also known as rebar. The cage reinforces the column under tension forces, and the concrete supports the column in compression, making an economical, strong, tall, slender column. The tallest cages used for this project range from 50 to 60 feet and weigh 20 to 25,000 pounds. We will rig up to the cage, the rod busters will use our picking beam and it's uh, a three-point pick basically to rig up to the column cage picking point in the top, the middle, and the bottom. And we'll use two lines with the crane and just basically stand it up from a horizontal to a vertical position. Uh, we'll swing it over and set it over top of our beams on top of the footer. Once the cage is set, crews focus on the formwork. The column forms are nine feet by four and a half feet and range in height from 10 to 52 feet. Crews use a large crane to place the form over the cage. Once we get it, get the column form down, all the way down touching the footer, then we connect our guy wires and our come-alongs, plumb the cage up, get it where it's in perfect position, you know, vertical, horizontal, and all that. So we're pretty much good. We disconnect it from the crane, and we're ready to start installing ties and pour concrete. Once the cage and form are in place, an inspector climbs into the column for a thorough assessment. Armed with a headlamp, harness, and measuring tape, the inspector enters the 60-foot column. Conditions inside are dark, hot, and humid. The inspector must move carefully during the 30 to 60 minutes it takes to complete the inspection. Here you'll see the vibrator in place for consolidation of the concrete as they pour it. These are hairpins. What we're checking here for is for adequate clearance against the edges of the form. And typically where we'll have issues is these, these hairpin bars that run through the column. We'll check one of those for you. What we're looking for is a typical four inches. Plenty of clearance there on the edge, four inches. And likewise, all the way to the top, between the edge of the reinforcing steel and the edge of the form. Looks great, Jeremy. Awesome. See areas needing attention. All right. So you know, are you ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. I believe so. You ready to rock and roll tonight? After a column passes inspection, crews are ready to pour concrete about 60 cubic yards for each column. From a pump truck positioned on the adjacent bridge, crews pump concrete into the column using what's called a tremie pipe. Finishers inside the column use a concrete vibrator to consolidate the layers and ensure the concrete fills the form completely, leaving no voids once the forms are removed. The entire process takes about three to four hours then the forms stay in place for about three days to give the concrete time to cure. The new US-331 bridge is currently slated for completion in early 2017. For more information, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or contact the Florida Department of Transportation, District 3.